During World War II, over 95,000 American GIs spent time in German POW camps, 95,000 who endured abuse and severe privations. Those captured in North Africa suffered through more than two years of captivity. Thousands bailed out of crippled aircraft during the Allies' extended bombing campaign over Germany and Nazi-occupied Europe. The Battle of the Bulge added another 25,000 prisoners to the Nazi Stalags. As the end of the war drew near and the situation in Germany deteriorated, the already deplorable conditions for American POWs grew worse every day. Dick Lockhart of Fort Wayne, Indiana, received his baptism of fire during the Battle of the Bulge, serving as an infantryman in the ill-fated 423rd Infantry Regiment of the 106th Infantry Division. In mid-December, the untested unit manned a quiet sector of the front lines near St. Vith, Belgium. When the Nazis launched their massive winter offensive, Lockhart's entire regiment was surrounded. Soon, word came down that the regiment was to surrender en masse. It was the saddest moment of Lockhart's young life. When the infantry attacked, we uh, fired away at, uh, there might have been a machine gun in the, that we had, but there were just a few rifles. Like I say, we had to share rifles, basically. And then uh, the, the Germans shifted their attack someplace else. And that's when we were told to get out, pull back. We did pull out of the house and fly off. Where we went after that, three or four days, like I say, till the afternoon of the 19th, is when the two regimental commanders surrendered. Fortunately, nothing happened to me, but there were definitely a lot of casualties, and I think an unnerved our officers to tell the truth. You know, it was passed on, destroy your weapons. And uh, they didn't go over too good. I, uh, I, I didn't like that at all, but of course we're supposed to follow orders. So I did that, but, but it, it troubled me. And I thought, well, now we had been for several days on the run, no food, no nothing. I thought, well, maybe we'll get some food and I can figure out a way to escape. That's my first thought. The Germans quickly hustled their prisoners to a railhead for transport to a POW camp deep inside Germany. For American fighter pilots, who now roamed freely over German airspace, there was no more enticing target than trains on the move. Trains carrying POWs displayed no special markings to indicate that prisoners were on board. We were bombed by the American Air Force while we were in the train. And uh, believe me, that's scary to hear those bombs. They sound for maybe, sounds like they're coming at you for maybe 10 minutes before they hit. So some boxcars were hit. Fortunately, uh, the box car I was in does not hit. But of course, all that means is the line is broken, railroad line is broken, so you set for hours and hours and hours, maybe a day or two. That You were still on the train? Oh, itself. yeah. Oh, that'd be less off. Let us out of the boxcar, no. How many in this box cart? Uh, I would say there is uh, between 60 and 70. They're made for 40 people, basically. Standard so, European box car that uh, the poor Jews were put on to take to Auschwitz. There's one of those in the, in the Holocaust Museum in Washington that looks like exactly the one that I was packed into. Got to Bad Orb on the 26th of December. One day after Christmas. Yeah. A month after Lockhart's capture, his parents received news their only son was missing in action, his fate unknown. It would be two more months before Dick Lockhart's parents discovered the fate of their son in a short letter. I am safe, he wrote, and everything is okay. <laughs>